um, one of the Pythagorean identities okay, to substitute here. So over to the side, just so you know what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to replace, well, let's see here. If we look at the left side and we look at the right side, what does the left side have that the right side doesn't? Cosine. Okay. The left side has cosine, the right side does not have cosine. So I'm going to look for an expression that I can use to replace the cosine squared. Well, according to our Pythagorean identities, what is cosine squared equal to? 1 minus sine squared. Cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So I'm going to replace cosine squared on the left side with 1 minus sine squared. And then I still had minus sine squared in my problem. And all I have to do now is combine those like terms right there on the left side. I have two minus sine squares. So we're done. One substitution, one step of simplifying, we're finished. Okay, we're going to do one more like this and then we're going to, I'll let you guys practice on your own. Okay, cosecant squared theta times tangent squared of theta minus 1 is equal to tangent squared theta. Pretty obvious we're going to work on the left side, right? There's not really anywhere we can go with the right side. It's one term, tangent squared. Now, I want to draw your attention to something. Okay, I know your eye is probably drawn to this tangent squared minus 1. But you need to notice that tangent squared is attached to cosecant squared because it's cosecant squared times tangent squared. So tangent squared minus 1 isn't even one of our identity. It's, it's 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Um, so that really doesn't even get us anywhere, but I just wanted to point that out, that cosecant is being multiplied by tangent. So you can't, if that were tangent squared plus 1, you could not replace it with secant. Okay, secant squared. You could not replace it with secant squared. Um, so Pythagorean identities are out right now. Let's write cosecant and tangent in terms of sine and cosine. So cosecant squared can be rewritten as 1 over sine squared. Tangent squared can be rewritten as sine squared over cosine squared. And we've still got that minus 1 on the end. And we are trying to show that that's equal to tangent squared. Well, when we multiply fractions, if something's in the numerator of one fraction, the denominator of another fraction, what can we do with it? We can cancel them. Okay? So we've got sine squared in the numerator of the second one and the denominator of the first one, so those can cancel out. So we've got 1 over cosine squared left. We're trying to get this to tangent squared. Can you see where this is maybe heading? What should we do with the 1 over cosine squared? Rewrite it as secant squared. 1 over cosine is secant, so 1 over cosine squared is secant squared. And now we're looking at our Pythagorean identity. Secant squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared, which is what was on the right side. Okay. 
Um, now, before I give you uh, the problems that I want you to practice with that are just like this, um, I need to really quickly go over something. Um, this is a side note. It has nothing to do with example number four. But if we had, I gotta think through this for a second. Um, if we had tangent of theta plus cosecant of theta, okay, and we needed to prove this equaled something, okay. And we turn those into terms of sine and cosine, okay? Tangent is sine over cosine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. Oh, let's make this a minus. Yeah, minus. Um, cosecant is 1 over sine, okay? We would love to be able to put those together, right? We would love to be able to combine those two fractions, but they have different denominators, they have different denominators. Um, so we need them to have a common denominator. Do y'all remember how to do common denominators with regular numbers? Okay, the same thing applies when you've got expressions like this. Um, so we need to multiply this first one, top and bottom, by sine, because that's the denominator of the other one. We need to multiply this one, top and bottom, by cosine. So we end up with sine times sine is sine squared, uh, minus 1 times cosine is cosine. And that's over the denominator sine theta, cosine theta. Now they have the same denominator. Um, now, I did not design this problem very well because it doesn't simplify past this point, but you do need that concept uh, on some of these problems that I'm going to ask you. Okay, getting a common denominator. You want them to have the same denominator. If they don't, then multiply it top and bottom so that they do. Okay, and I can help you on an individual basis if you need help with that. But I just wanted to point it out to the whole class. Hopefully I won't have to answer it 15 different times. <laughs> 